we could have covered the whole thing in one session. So are we talking about the reading and writing to files in this chapter? Uh, some of you have done this when you did one of the projects and was asking you to do the writing files. So Java being object-oriented language, everything is gonna be in objects. So we're gonna have objects for our file and object for our scan. So we're gonna need two of them for the input. So we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna create an object for our file and then we're gonna create an object for the scanner to be able to read. And just like we were doing before from the console, console, from the console, uh, we're gonna be using the same thing next next int, next double to read uh, text or integer or double. And we're gonna go through a little more detail about how we're gonna handle some of these things. <clears throat> so one thing that we can do, we have seen this before, we can uh, check to see if we have a double before we read it, uh, so we don't get into any problem. The second part, we're gonna talk about exceptions and how we're gonna handle those things. Uh, so if I don't have a double and I try to read double, then we might end up in some uh, issues. For the writing, we're gonna have the print writer that's gonna be writing out. Uh, we just gonna have one of them for this one. So we're gonna have the print writer to write out. And then um, we have our print LN and print and print F that we used already. We can uh, connect those to our uh, object. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, we create our output object over here, the print writer, and then we're gonna be using it to write to it. So remember print is just writing, print LN goes to the next line, and then print F is gonna be writing with some kind of a formatting. We did this already, so you should know about it. It's just the difference is we just connecting to the uh, output file object. And of course, after we're done, we're gonna do the close. The reason we're doing the close, in case there was something going on, with read and write to a file and I don't close it and the program closes, it can cause some issues. But if not, then it's gonna happen anyway. So we need to put the close in there, even though it might not affect us that much, we're gonna do that anyway. Okay. So if we are trying to open a file and the file is not there. So if you try to find a file and the file is not there, it's gonna throw an exception. So exception, C++ was considering that the programmers uh, already know a lot of the stuff. We don't have to worry about it. We let them take care of it. So a lot of things happening in C++, it could be going on without any detection. In Java, we are gonna be working a lot with exceptions. So something goes wrong and a lot more catching of those things in Java than C++, it's gonna throw an exception. You handle your exception, you can figure it out and do something with it, then you're gonna take care of it. If you don't take care of it, then your program can potentially crash. So the way that we're gonna add the exceptions is we're gonna use the word throws, and then we're gonna say what type that's gonna be thrown. So in this case, we're gonna have file not exception, not found exception. So I had a question. Go ahead. Uh, what are the most fundamental exceptions to throw, like to catch? What are the most like ones we should focus and be aware of? Well, it depends on what the, I, I'm, I'm going to go through those. We're going to get to those. Uh, so 
any area that you're working, you can consider which. You just don't want to throw area. exceptions. I mean, it's better just to focus on the fundamental ones. And then, you know, well, to take the don't question. Worry about, don't gonna, worry about the minor ones. The, the question that's going to come up is if I'm working in a certain, uh, certain uh, piece of code, what can go wrong? And then we talk about all of these things when we go more detail in exceptions. Uh, so we're going to talk about all of these things. And as you practice on it and you learn about it, it's going to come kind of semi-automatic to you. And then when you see this, just like in your uh, previously, if you divide an integer by integer, you would lose a decimal that you would think about that automatically that, uh, you know, when you have a division, you check to see if it's integer by integer. And here, we're gonna talk about the exceptions, we're gonna practice on these things. And then if you practice enough, you can know which one goes where. So for example, here, if I'm working with the file, the exception is gonna be what? Related to file not found. So if I'm working with the file, I gotta consider the exception that if the file is not found, what can we do? So the whole idea that now you got me started on this is when we run in the program, there are things can go wrong. There are two things. So the goal always is not to stop the problem. So we can have options. So if something goes wrong, can I fix it and move on? So if I have a user on a console and put something wrong, I can ask the user to put it again. I can have some default values that I can set and move on, or I cannot do anything, then I have to stop. So for example, if I'm trying to read from a file and the file is not there, then I cannot do anything, I, I, I don't have the data, so I cannot move forward. But if I'm writing to a file and it's not there, I can create a file and put it right there. So that's the difference between the output file and input file. So we're gonna be talking about those a little more detail on the Tuesday, uh, if I don't get them to them right now. Uh, so here we're talking about how we're gonna format. So remember when we're writing the file, there are two types of file. The file that's been written for human, and there are gonna be some files that's gonna be written for computer. So if it's written for the computer, computer doesn't care about the wording. So in this case, at the bottom, it says total. The computer doesn't care. It just needs, it's much easier if I have the data that I just read from it. And I keep in mind that the last one is a total. We're gonna to talk a little more about how things are in real life and how do we do it. So, if I am writing it for human, then I might want to have some user-friendly text in there somewhere. So if I see all of these numbers, then maybe I would have a header for it to say, what, what are they? What, what these numbers are? Are they uh, grades? Are they prices? Are they, what are they? So that can potentially be put it in there. In this case, it's just trying to get you practice on formatting. So it says, okay, if I have a bunch of numbers, then I want to print it in this format, then I have to consider about how much of a spaces I want to go forward and how many decimal points do I want to put, and of course the word total over here. So those are the considerations that we would have for doing our print F to do the formatting for us. So we're gonna be manually counting the number of spaces and the number of uh, things that we have and then push it forward. And remember by doing this, it's not gonna cut it out, it's just gonna display. So if I have something that's bigger than this number, so when I say 15, that means a total space that I have is 15. So that would be two decimal point, one actually the point itself, so that's three, then I can have 12 digits. That's what 15.2 means. So 12 digit, a decimal point, and two decimal point. Uh, 
but if I go more than 12 digits, it's not going to cut it. It's just going to display. We talked about this before. Uh, <clears throat> and then, uh, of course, when we get to the last one, that's the way we're going to be doing it. Any questions on this one? So whenever we throw an exception, do we need a catch here? Do we, do we need to provide like an alternative? Yes. Yes. We're going to get to those. Yes. That's correct. Okay, I'm not gonna do these things right now. We're gonna get back to this later. Uh, so if I have, a, remember the next is gonna read a string. Uh, then we have integer reading and double read. If we know exactly what type of data we have, and it's going to be like that all the time, then we can go to that direction of reading these things. But when it's going to be mixed, that's going to be mixed uh, number and uh, word, and I might want to have some kind of an input checking, then we have different way of doing it. So we know what we're talking about this string that uh, it's not gonna have. Uh, I think we talked about this already, but uh, we can talk about it again. Uh, so we are going to skip uh, space. Uh, we are, and then we have an input buffer. Everything's gonna be input buffer. And then we go read that one. Uh, if we read one word, it's going to read it. It's going to stay at the end of it. The next read is going to skip over white spaces, which is space, tab, uh, new line, uh, and then it's going to read the next one. So if I have my words next to each other with one space or multiple spaces, or if I uh, what I want to get at is this part. So if I want to read one character. So this one, this part is a little different in Java than C++ because you could read one character at a time. Here, I'm gonna read in a string and then I'm gonna get the character of that string. So to read characters, we're gonna ha have the, uh, this type of uh, delimiter, basically is the null delimiter. And then we're gonna read one thing and then we're gonna get the character of zero of that one. So it's just like a first thing on a string. So that's a little, uh, little uh, not comfortable, but that's the way we're gonna be reading characters in Java. We, when we're reading characters, we have some similarities to what we do in C++. You did this in your CS2. So we can check it to see if it's digit. So if I read one character, I can check it to see if it's a digit or not. We can check it to see if it's a letter. We can check it to see if it's uppercase, lowercase, or we can check it to see if it's white space. White space is tab, new line, and space. So if I'm reading one character at a time, I can check it to see what it is. So one way of reading your input, if I wanna validate it, and if I have a mixture of those things, is if I'm reading one character at a time, I can check it to see if that's what I want or that's the starting of something for me. Now, this is the part I wanna spend some time on it. Uh, we can figure it out how we're going to handle this. There is different ways of handling it. And then I want some input from you guys so we can talk about it together. So we have a mixture of things in a file. There are different ways that my input file is going to come to me. Remember, some of these files that are coming into my program potentially has been created through other programs. 
So some other program did their work. They created this file for me. I'm going to pick it up and I do my work and I create file for somebody else to use. So we are thinking about doing a country and population. So if I have country and population, the file that comes to me, they can be in different format. One of them is that I have the name of the country and the population right after each other. So if I have a file like this, how would you handle it? How do you, how do you uh, approach this? A test to see. So you want to read it as a text? So we have something called the next line that I can read the whole line that is available to us. So we can use next line to read the whole line. But remember, I need to separate the population versus the name of the country. The problem is going to come in that not necessarily every time I have a name of the country, it's not just going to be one word. Remember, I can use next to get the word. So for the first two, I can use next to get the name and int to get next int to get the uh, population. But when I get to the countries that have more than one name, then we're going to have a problem. So now we got to figure out what we're going to do. So we have different approaches and that is there purposely. So we can look at different way of doing the same thing. So one way of doing it is just read the whole line and process the whole line. So I'm going to read one line at a time, and then I'm going to figure out a way to separate them. So one way of separating it is to look at the character. And as far as this character is not a digit, I'm going to move forward. So I'm going to start from the beginning. The name is going to start with a character. So I am or a space. So I'm going to start with the first one. I'm going to keep moving forward till I find a digit. So that's what I'm doing over here. So I'm going to keep moving forward till I see a digit. I'm going to stop. So this one is going to stop right here. It's going to. So if I execute this while loop, I'm going to stop right here. My I is 14 at this time. Now I can take the uh, substring from zero to I, and that would give me the name of the country. And then the population would be as a, a string is going to be the rest of it. So from I to the rest, that's going to give me the population. We have something called the trim, and the trim is going to get rid of extra spaces. So when I did this one, I would have had some spaces. I can potentially have it before or after what I have. So the trim is going to get rid of those uh, spaces. So in this case, because we started with the I at 14, and we did the substring 0 to I, we got an extra space or spaces over here. So the trim can get rid of those spaces. So if I have it in either way, if it either side, it's going to get rid of it. So if I had some spaces at the beginning, some spaces at the end, it's going to get rid of all the spaces. Now we got it cleaned. Now we have the population, but we have it as a string. We have the country name as a string. So we read one line. The assumption is every line is going to have a country name and the population. We process it. We got the country name separated than the population. And we trim it so we don't have any extra space. Now, do we want to keep population as a string? Or do I want it to change it to? Uh, integer. How do I change an 
Anybody? Come on, you guys seen this. You have done it in some of your homework. Use integer dot first int. Yes, that's the easiest way of doing it. Thank you. Who was that? Herto? Yeah. So we can uh, use the object of integer to do the parse int. All right, so we can potentially create a scanner to do this. So we can in uh, CS2, you may or may not been exposed to as a stream. So this is similar to that one. So we create a, a scanner for the characters. So when we are uh, going through, we can, we can do that and we can use the line scanner to go through the object. And then if we have, uh, so, so far it's going to each one of them. And then if I see a, integer, I'm going to stop. So this is going to go look for next int. So as far as I don't have an integer, I'm going to add it to my country name. And then my population is going to be reading the next integer. So I'm going to read Okay, let's, let's go over this. I wanna be sure that you understand what's going on. So I have a, a scanner. This is not for the file, this is for my line. I'm creating a scanner for my line. So I have read one line, I'm gonna create a scanner for that line. So I can call the next, I can call the next to read one word. So I'm gonna read one word. Then I check it to see if it has integer. If it doesn't have integer, I'm gonna read another word and I'm gonna concatenate it to the previous word. I'm gonna keep doing it till I find the integer. When I find the integer, I'm gonna read that as an integer. So in this case, I am reading my population as an integer. So I'm gonna keep reading word. So if the country has two word, three word, five word, as many word that it has, as far as if there is no number in there, then I'm going to be okay. Does that make sense or not? Mertok, you have your microphone on. Do you have a question? No, I mute. Okay, that's, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Uh, yeah, because I saw you knowing going on. Anybody having any problem with what we're talking about over here? All right. So that's what integer dot parse int or double parse double, we can change it. So one thing that's gonna happen if I want to uh, parse it, my string cannot have spaces. So how do I get rid of spaces? I use the method called trim. So I, if I have my population, we're gonna, we are talking about multiple things at the same time. I want you to think about this. So the first one that we did, we created population as string. The second format that we did, we read the population as integer. We're going back to the first one. If we read the population as a string, we can change it to integer. But 
it cannot have any spaces in it. So I have to call the trim to trim it first before I try to make it as an integer. Otherwise, it's going to fail. This is another place that can throw an exception if I have. And this is the problem that you, know, you might have it with your test data. You don't have no spaces. Then you don't do any trim. And then it goes out there. And six months later, somebody's going to scream that my data is crashing. And we didn't think about it in the design time because there are some numbers that potentially can have some spaces before or after it. Can we pass something into the parameter of the trim? But again, well, no, you don't know. No. That, yeah, the trim doesn't have any parameters. It's just going to trim. So we can have some input that is not formatted the way that we think it should be or we want it to be. So we can have some uh, uh, number mixed with character. Uh, so if we do next int and we have a mixture of these things, then the uh, it's going to read the integer and it's going to stay there and we're going to have all kinds of problems. And again, if we have some issues with the reading int and double and it's not there, then we're going to have exception. Again, we will talk more detail about exceptions. So this is the place that I said, okay, if I am trying to read integer and what I'm trying to read is not integer, then it's going to be exception. So if we have uh, no input and you try to read integer and double, then no such element exception is going to come. So if you're trying to read it, but it has it there and it's a different format, we're going to get mismatch exception. If it's not there, then it's going to be no such element exception. So this usually happens when you hit the end of the file and you're still trying to read. There's nothing else in the file, but you're still trying to read. So we can uh, avoid this by going with checking to see if it has integer before we read the integer. So we can uh, avoid the exception. All right. So. Other format, we might say, okay, so if we have them in one line, maybe it's causing us a problem. What about if we change the format and we put the name in one line and then the population next line? So if I get a whole line, that would have my country line, country name, and the next one is going to have the population. So I can go through the file. I'm assuming that this is the way the is formatted. So I have name, population, name, population, name, population. So I'm going to read a name that's going to be the whole line. It has one word, two word, three word, whatever it is. I'm going to read it as a whole line, and then I can read the uh, population as an integer. So that's the third way of reading this. Okay, so this is something that you have seen it in your C++ if you have not been careful about it. So when we are going to be reading stuff, especially with the next line and we mix them up all together. So if we have something like this, and uh, we did the get next line, then we're going to end up with this one. Now, if I do next int, remember, if I do next line, what does it do? It's going to go look for the new line and it's going to consume whatever is before that 
and then it's going to take the new line out. So that's what we did to read the name. Now, when I do next int, it's going to read and it's going to stop where the integer is going to end. So when I'm reading next int, it's going to stop right there at the end of my integer. That means my input now has an extra new line left in there. So when you mix it up, you got to be careful with these things. And next read, if I read again, it's going to just read empty string because it sees this uh, backslash n. So if I call the new, uh, if I call the read for a line, it's just going to read this one. It does not read India. So this is what we're talking about. The last one is going to, so I'm saying next in dot next line, in dot next in, in dot next line, but it's not reading the next line, it's just going to read the empty one. So if we are mixing them up, we got to be careful that reading the, uh, the line is going to consume the backslash n, but reading the int for double is not going to consume the backslash n. So we got to be careful with that. Okay, so we did talk about this before. Uh, we're gonna talk about it again. We're gonna talk about the formatting and there's some additional things. We may or may not uh, use these things in our formatting before. So when we're doing the printf, you can put some of these things in there. Uh, so we can do minus for uh, left justify. I can put a zero. That would be leading a zero is going to be there. So remember, what would be this one? If I do print F, percent what? If I do print F, I'm going to put a percent. What numbers do I put after it for, for displaying this? Come on, somebody, wake up. Alexi, wake up. So if I have print F percent, what numbers do I put for this? One, two, three, four, five, six. So that would be percent six point two. F. You guys did this before. Okay, if I put a zero, that means I want some leading zero before it. If I put the plus, that means I want to put a plus. Remember, the, the, the negative sign is always going to show. The positive doesn't show, but if I want to show it, I can do it this way. If I put a left parent, that means the negative is going to be shown in the parentheses instead of having a negative sign. If I put a comma, it's going to separate them every three digits. If I put a caret in there, it's going to change it to uppercase. So these are available for your formatting. I'm not expecting you memorize it, but you know where it is and you can look it up. So you should be able to know how to look it up. We talked what about this already, right? No, okay. they, is this well, the they, first time you guys seeing this? We did talk about this. I had a question. Yes. Uh, yes. So is this from Objective C or C sharp or something like the uh, percent negative ten s? I think it's. I, I think I've seen it before. Something. That is coming from the original C language. Yeah, there's so many C like Objective C, C sharp. Right? Well, Objective C basically they took the C language and they modified it a little bit. C++ is coming from the C language, but they modified it a lot. So yes, Objective C is you trying. So C language did not have any objects. The original C language didn't have any objects. 
So, so, so that's the selling point for C++, right? The C++, plus point plus is it was objective, but the problem with the C++ is a huge, huge one. So when they try to do it with the cell phones, they want to have some objects, but they didn't want to have all the C++ stuff. So it's compromised between the C language and C++, that's Objective-C. So it's kind of a compromise between these two, mainly because the space that they didn't have in the cell phones. Nowadays, they have a lot more space and they can do a lot more stuff. So when we say 10.2, that means the whole thing is gonna be 10. Then we're gonna deduct the three, so it's gonna have seven over here. So we know about this, these four, uh, uh, decimal integer, I call it digit to just remember it. That would be F is for floating point, which we are using it for a double, E for exponential floating, G for general format, and S for a string. Uh, 